I'm an Air Force Airman. I am a bow hunter. I am a fisherman. I am Mark of All Trades. Hey guys, welcome back to Mark of All Trades. I appreciate you guys tuning into the channel. If this is your first time, make sure you hit that subscribe button and I'll let you know all about hunting, fishing, and everything in between. So today I wanted to talk about something that's pretty near and dear to me is learning how to hunt. So I know that that sounds like a simple phrase, but in this video I want to show you all the steps of what you need to do before you even kill a deer, before you even get into the woods. I want to break down all those steps so that it's super simple for you and you can use this video as guidance to help you in the future. So the first thing that most people probably don't know if you're not a hunter is that you need to take a course that will teach you everything about hunting safety and just a general overview of hunting and that's called a hunter's education course or a hunter's safety course and most states this is a requirement for you to have in order for you to even get a license in the state that I'm from Michigan if you were born before a certain time you don't have to take it but usually at this time you'd probably be like 50 years old so everybody under 50 would probably have to take that course um, so I took it when I was 13 I believe and it was a week-long course and my dad and I took it together and we went to Bass Pro Shop and that's where it was held. It was five days a week. It was held in the evening. So I think that we were there for Monday through Friday from five to eight. And then on Friday, we took, I believe it was a 50 question test and you had to score a certain percentage in order to pass and get your hunter safety card. And the cool thing about this course and this card is once you get that, it's good for your entire lifetime. And then the other cool thing is that it's not only good for the state that you're in, but it's good for other states. And I'm a testament to that because I was first in Michigan and then, you know, I got stationed in other states, New Mexico, Illinois, and I was able to purchase licenses over the counter with no problem just showing my hunter safety ID. So the things that they cover in hunter safety is just a general overview. You could definitely go more in depth with everything that they're teaching you because they just teach you the basics. It's just enough to get your feet wet and to just guide you out in the field if you're by yourself or you're in a situation that you're just not sure what to do. They'll tell you about gun basics of the safety of it. They'll teach you about bow safety, um, tree stand safety, ground bind safety. Um, just they don't dive into it. It's just basically, hey, look, these are the things you want to look out for. Um, if you come in this situation, just make sure of it. It's on you as the hunter. It's your responsibility to look into that a little bit more and just to make sure that you're gaining the knowledge you need so that when you need it in the field, you're all set and you're good to go. So one thing you wanna to do to preserve that is that mine's a piece of paper, but I took a picture of both sides, front and back, and I emailed it to myself. And it's always gonna be in my email, so then that way you'll never lose it. And if you forget to leave it at home or anything like that, you always have it on you because most people don't leave home without their phone. So that's just a tidbit to maybe help you a little bit if you ever come in that situation where you don't have it on you. Now that you have your hunter safety card, you're probably thinking to yourself, what do I do next? So that one's going to be pretty easy. You're going to want to go get whatever you want to hunt for. So you want to realize, am I going to hunt bear, elk, moose, deer? What do I want to do, even if you're fishing? So when you go get your tags, whether that be at Walmart, Cabela's, wherever, I would say 90% of the time, wherever you go, there's going to be a little catalog, and it's going to be a DNR catalog book. And you're going to make sure it's for the same year that you're hunting, obviously. And that'll tell you everything you need to know in that little booklet. And it's so cool because it'll tell you everything as far as what time you can start hunting, what time hunting ends. It'll show you all the public land spots if you want to go hunt and you don't have private land to hunt. It teaches you everything in that little booklet. So if you just take one night and read through it, it'll definitely benefit you whenever it comes to hunting. And if you don't see the little booklets whenever you go to get your license, you can go online. If you just type in DNR of whatever state you're in, usually the top three URL links will definitely show you which ones are applicable to your state. So there's another easy way to, you can just access it from your phone. But when you're thinking about equipment that you wanna use when you start hunting or fishing, 
if you're just getting into it, you probably don't want to break the bank and just go out and buy a brand new Matthews bow and brand new Sitka gear. You know, you'll probably want to ease into it a little bit. So one of the good things about that is that you can use stuff off of eBay. You can go online and grab stuff that's that's been used. Those are those are the things that have gotten me through a lot of hunting seasons. And I actually I got my bow off of eBay and I paid a quarter of the price of what it was new. And so those are just a lot of good avenues that you can do. And a lot of times if you have buddies that hunt, they'll, you know, sometimes give you the stuff or, you know, hey, throw me 50 bucks and you can have this, you know. So you might want to try that avenue too. But when it comes to gear, you definitely want quality, quality stuff. Because once you get out into that late season and it gets cold, you don't want to have a thousand layers on and you're looking like, the Michelin man you know so just make sure that you're buying good stuff and good stuff doesn't necessarily mean the most expensive but definitely don't go cheap whenever it comes to getting products that are gonna last you if you're continually buying low-budget things that continue to break what's the point you know you're just gonna keep throwing away money so just make sure that you look into the reviews of everything that you're buying and that it suits you just because it fits somebody else doesn't necessarily mean that it's gonna be a right fit for you if you guys want to take a look at this video that I did, I went over all the hunting gear that I have. And I definitely don't have the most top of the end line gear. Like I said, I'm just using gear that will get me by, but is warm and not too bulky. So you'll want to check that video out if you're curious on you know, how to layer or what camouflage is right for you. Once you get your equipment and you're wondering where you can sight in your weapons and bows and guns or whatever you have, you can always go to like a state recreational park if they have a sighting range or a gun range or something like that. And they always have, you know, pretty decent stuff that you can use to sight in your equipment. You can also go to a private gun range or a private archery range. When you're looking for equipment, I would definitely go to your local archery shop. Um, the Bass Pro Shops and the Cabela's, those are nice if you, if you have them around. But the thing with that that I've kind of learned is that the person working in the archery department may not necessarily be the archery guy. There might be somebody in the archery department that's not necessarily up to date with how to, how to string your bow or how to do whatever to your bow, and they're just covering. So you want to make sure that they know what they're talking about. I wanted to give you guys a story of one time at Cabela's that's happened to me. So we were in Lubbock, Texas, and we were at the Cabela's there, and I was over in the archery just looking around, and I saw that somebody was over there at the pro shop for the archery, and they wanted to get their bow poundage increased. The guy said, no problem, I got you. So the next thing that happened is he went over to the bow press to see how far he had increased it, and he put it down, and the whole bow exploded. I wasn't sure what happened, but then I heard, I heard the guy go back over to him. He apologized and said, I put too much poundage on the bow, and it couldn't take it. And so ultimately, he said that his manager said that they would replace the bow for him and that they could basically get their reign of the bows that they had and pick out a brand new one. But that's one of the reasons why I personally don't go to the bigger box stores like that. And I'm not saying that all Cabela's are like that, but that's just my experience. And I, I feel a little bit better when I go to my local archery shop because they they have more of a knowledge on these kinds of things. They don't have to worry about guns because they're only focused on bows. So that's just my two cents. You can take it for whatever it's worth. But let me know below if you guys have any stories like that that you've ever seen at any kind of archery shop or Bass Pro Cabela's. One of the main things about archery shops is, is your local archery shop, is that they are dealers for certain brands. So like Matthews Bows, you can't buy them at Bass Pro Shop. You can't buy them at Cabela's. You have to go to your local archery dealer. These guys have gone to the seminars and events that those guys put on so that they know exactly how to fit your bow exactly to what it needs to have. And so, you know, they're not just, hey, this is the general book, this is how you do it. They've, they know exactly what they're talking about. And for me personally, I trust the archery shop that's near me. They've proven time and time again of how great a knowledge that they have. And if you're curious to know what that looks like, I'll put a video link here. And this guy that I've been talking to for a little bit, he knows all the ins and outs about Matthews. And I definitely trust him whenever I take my bow there. Once you have everything all sighted in, you have the equipment that you need, you're just waiting for the time it comes to go hunting. One of the things you're gonna to wanna to do is scout. 
And so you may be asking yourself, where am I going to hunt? So there's a couple of different avenues that you can use. You can use that DNR map book that we talked about earlier, and that'll show you all the places that you can hunt. And there'll be a little map on there that's a really vague, and it'll at least get you in the general area. Another thing that you can use that I've been using for the past two years is called Onyx Hunt, and that has been a game changer for me. If you open up the app, it'll show you all the places of who owns what property, what places are private land, what places are pro public land. And the cool thing is, is it goes off of your phone. So whenever you're walking through the woods, there's a little dot that indicates where exactly you are. And you can drop little pins and it'll show you where you put your tree stand. And then you can annotate the icon on if you want to put, hey, my truck's here. Hey, my trail cam is right here. And honestly, that's helped me find a lot of my trail cams that I just thought I knew where they were. But thanks to this app, it definitely saved me from losing a trail cam. So when it comes to deer hunting and the equipment, some of the essential things that you have to have are a weapon, whether that be a bow or a gun. You'll want some sort of ammunition or arrows or bolts if you're using a crossbow. Most states, you'll need hunter orange and there's usually a requirement for how much. So if you just have a hat on, in some states that's not enough. Some places you actually need to have on a full vest where they can see you 360 degrees. Another thing is, is a good sharp knife. On this one, emphasis on the sharp. Because once you are you know, getting into the field dressing of an animal, that knife gets dull real quick. So even if you have a backup knife, which I highly suggest, that's what you're gonna wanna bring with you because it'll definitely make quicker work and you'll thank yourself later if you have a sharp knife. The next thing that you're always gonna want to have on you, whether you're going in at daylight or just midday, is a flashlight. A flashlight can save your life. If you don't have a flashlight on you, you're wrong because you could be out there tracking an animal for who knows how long. And you wanna make sure that you're prepared for when that happens. So just adding a flashlight to your arsenal is definitely gonna help you out a ton. And then the last thing that you're gonna want is a Ziploc bag that you keep your tags in. So most states are gonna tell you that you need to carry your tags on you whenever you're hunting. And you do not wanna get caught in the woods without that. That's gonna be a huge foul on your part. And you just wanna make sure that you're prepared. So if you have them in a Ziploc baggie and it starts raining, they won't get ruined and they'll be squared away. When it comes to the different strategies of hunting, there's a couple different ways that you can go. So you can do the tree stand method, and that's basically just a lock on tree stand that you can buy and just lock it onto the tree and you just sit in that. Another one that's fairly new to the hunting world here recently is saddle hunting. That's really taken off. That's the method that I mostly used last year and I'm telling you it's probably the most efficient way to get into the tree. For all day sits it's probably not efficient but I would definitely go the tree stand route. Um, another thing that you can use is a climbing tree stand and this one's kind of nice because you can put it on your back and then ultimately climb the tree without having any sort of climbing sticks with you or a ladder. Other options are you can have a pop-up blind. It's a pop-up ground blind and these have come a long ways over the years. Uh, most of them just have uh, retractable sticks that can open and pop back up and you can be hunting in a matter of three minutes, you know, so it's not that bad. Um, there's also a permanent ground blind that you can have and you can't necessarily have those on public land depending on where you're hunting um, but on private land you see that a lot especially you know these these big time hunters that hunt over food plots and everything else like that those are those are awesome because they're almost twofold they'll conceal you and they'll also protect you from any kind of scent so that the deer doesn't smell you whenever they get downwind of you so there's just a couple more that we'll go over too. You can do still hunting, which that's walking through the woods very slowly, just trying to see a deer and maybe sneak up on it. And that's also kind of similar to spot and stalk. And that's a big strategy whenever you go out west um, where there's not a lot of trees. This is basically you still hunting until you get within range of whatever you're hunting and you try and make the shot of an animal, spot and stalk. And then the last one, is a deer drive. So in some states you cannot do a deer drive, but in others it's perfectly acceptable to deer drive. And basically a deer drive is when you have a group of guys this way and you're just going through the woods getting closer and closer to the end of the property. And so what you're trying to do is 
let's say you line five guys up with this way and you all have guns you have a shooting point so if a deer comes up over here you're not going to shoot your partner he's going to take that shot straight ahead so you have to be mindful of your shooting zones so that you're not firing in one another's zones and potentially getting somebody else hurt but you have five people all this way and you're hoping to jump a deer and whoever has the shot can make the make the shot at the deer so I've I've been a part of a couple um, they've never been successful but I I've heard that a, a lot of people get deer this way so kudos to them so when you're talking about animal movement especially deer the deer in the mornings are going to be moving from the feeding areas to their bedding areas because they'll feed at night and then they'll go lay down in a sense during the day and that's not to say that the deer don't move during the day because that's not true but generally speaking that's what happens and then in the evening time it's just the opposite so they're going to be getting out of their beds and focusing towards food or water or any, anything along those lines. So the hunting season can be broken up into four periods. You're gonna have the early season, the pre-rut, the rut, and the post-rut. When we're talking about the rut, the rut refers to that's the breeding season that the animals are gonna be mating. So this is the time that they're gonna be most active, and especially during the daytime. This is when a lot of deer, a lot of bigger deer, mature, are gonna be shot because they're on their feet during the day and they're a lot less nervous. And they're basically just, they're looking for a hot animal that's, that's in heat and they're trying to mate with it. That ultimately gives you the advantage because you're just, you're, you're waiting wherever you are or spot and stalking and you have the upper hand because they're focused on something else. When you enter the post rut, that one's usually around December, January timeframe. And if you're hunting public land, this is the time you wanna go out. Because this that cold is what usually deters most hunters from actually going out and, and sitting out there because you know most people don't want to be uncomfortable sitting in the stand and so you know that cold is definitely going to deter them for sure i hope this video helped you guys in figuring out if you want to go hunting and what the steps you need to do are because i really enjoyed putting this information together for you because I want you to learn from my experiences and hopefully I can help somebody else who hasn't had any experience hunting or maybe is thinking about getting into the hunting world. So let me know below if you guys have any questions or comments of getting into hunting or anything along those lines.